Welcome to moving around in Doom Emacs. In this video, I'm going to cover simple ways of getting around in Emacs. Nothing super fancy if you've been using Emacs or Doom Emacs for a while. Um, this is not really a video for you if you're very, very new to it and you're just kind of like, what is this and what have I done to my computer? That's probably, you're probably in the right spot. All right, so let's get into this. Um, right now, we're going to cover moving basically moving around simply. We're going to cover um, uh, getting into the settings uh, places. So it's just called your config files, but your preferences and other such things, how I mess with that, and then how to reload it and execute some commands. So um, it should be simple. So we're going to start off with some basic movements here. I, I believe in my scratch buffer to mess around as far as which buffers you have open, which buffers are almost like tabs, if you will. To mess around with that, you hit space B I. That's gonna open up everything. So I've got a few open because I was messing as far as like trying to get this video all figured out. So let's go to um, scratch, all right. So that's the buffer I wanted to look at is the scratch buffer. This is your playground or your place just to put in random stuff. It doesn't save anything you put in here. So if you're just learning and messing around, this is a good place to begin. So we want to just put some text in and mess around with it. So let's do that. So to add in text, I've already gone over this, but you hit I to jump into insert mode, which is where you can add text. And then you can add whatever text you would like to add. All right, so there's my text that I want to add, and uh, let's um, let's uh, let's copy this to another file, and then to a new file in a new directory, and save it. Just just to give you the idea of how far you can go with this. All right, so JK, whoops, JK is okay. That's how I get out of the edit mode to where I can now start to move around. Um, I is the insert, JK to get out or I to insert escape to get out, I to insert control G to get out. So a few ways to get out. I use JK really fast to get out. So I'm in and uh, I want to copy this and put it into another folder, another file in another folder, in a brand new folder, I should even say. So let's get out. All right, so now I can move with uh, JK, H and L. To highlight things, you get into what's known as visual mode, which is a V, so V, and I hit down, 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 down. And if I want to just go all the way this way, I can do that as far as just hold on to the L button and move or hold on to the H and move. But a quick way to get to the end of the word you're on is the E button. So it'll stop at these semicolons. So you want to press that a few times. All right, it is all highlighted. Now, let it, let's copy it. Control C is not going to work um, because this is, just not based on that framework of things. So to get it, you would use, you yank it, which is a Y, so yank it. So now I've yanked it, it's in my clipboard. Now let's make a new file and a new folder. So space, FF, now I'm in my home directory. So let's just make up a new folder, make up new folder. All right, now here's my new folder. Now we uh, hit another slash and then we'll just do new file. And for our purposes, we'll just make this a text file. You can make this a .org, .md. Um, I'll just, real simple, make it a text file. So now what it's gonna do is it's gonna ask me, hey, this directory does not exist. So this folder doesn't exist. Should we create it? Yeah, we should create it. Why? Now we're in. Now that new folder we've created, now I wanna paste what I've done. And it's not always called paste. I even forget what it's called in evil mode, but it is P. Yeah, no, it is paste. All right, cool. So, e. so I pasted what I yanked from my previous file. So now I want to save this file. So to save, you hit space F S right there, save buffer, space F S. So now this file has been saved. So let's check to see this new file. To browse files, space F F, it brings you to the directory you're at. And now look, I've got this file here called new text, new file dot txt. Let's say I want to make the new file, new file dot md. Creates it, and then it actually gives me a document title here. So new file. Um, oops, sorry. Um, yeah. 
let me show you that really quick to add a new line underneath the one that you're at wherever you at wherever you're at on this line you just hit o and it creates a new file underneath it so you don't always have to go you know maybe maybe what you used to, used to do is have to like go all the way to the end hit uh you know let's get an insert mode here hit enter and then you get to the new file and uh evil mode man you save so much keystrokes you just hit oh let's say i wanted to add a file above this one it's shift o so uh a little bonus tip uh for you there all right so we've got this new file there it is and uh paste it oh here's another thing with pasting um let's go back to this file and uh shift v just selects everything not you know not just um whatever line that you're on, whatever section you are there. So that selects the whole thing. Let's go back and paste it and then save it. So space FF, uh, sorry, space FF there. Oh, snipe, huh? What, what did I do there? Oops. All right. Sorry, getting sidetracked here. All right. So um, here we are. Now we're in here and um, what happens is is that when you delete something whatever you delete is the thing that goes inside of your clipboard that's just how it's it's done so you just have to keep that in mind when you're editing things i'm sure you could change the settings to change that but that's how it is on the default so let's say i wanted to add this to the bottom i'll hit space d d that deletes the whole line that i just looked at go here hit, hit p and it pastes it right there d d paste it so I, I do like that feature, especially when you're moving things around in a document. You know, you want to, let's just, say, you know, remove that paragraph, add it uh, right there. That's fine. Then save it. Cool. So that's part of moving text and moving around with text. And I like that a lot when I'm messing with things here. All right. So that's just the basics of messing with text. Now let's actually do something useful with it. So the, one of the places you're going to go a lot when using Doomy Max is your config files. This is where you're going to edit the preferences. You're going to edit the font choice, the theme, um, a lot of other things inside of here. And let me just give you a brief description of what that looks like when you're doing that. So let's go to um, your package, your uh, private config here, which is space uh, FP. I hope you've been noticing that the commands that I'm using are happening right there. Let's look at the init folder, which is um, has just about everything. To get to the top of the document, hit GG. That gets you to the top. Uh, Shift G gets you to the bottom. So I'm trying to think of those commands that I just use out of habit and just tell you what they are. So you can look at them on the bottom here or just listen to what I'm saying. Here we are in the init file. And there's a lot going on here. Um, you can make or break your system here. That's Part of the drawbacks of Emacs is that you can just break things really fast. But it also lets you edit things really fast, too, when you know what you're doing. All right. Here is a tip that I don't follow, but when I do actually follow it, it pays me back in dividends. And that is reading all the comments that our creator of Doom Emacs has put in for us. So read this and don't skip over it because it's going to tell you some things that will save you when you make, mess things up or just save you time as far as how do I do this? So just keep that in mind. Read all of that here. All right. So here's how this works. The creator here, um, listener, he has added these um, modules and these modules are a collection of different packages. A way to add a package that you just wanted to look at is you'd hit... Uh, you, know, you run the command, which is space, uh, colon, and you hit package, install, and then you just find the command you want, or find the new package, and install it. So um, there you go. Uh, and then you hit enter, and it will install it. But what he has done is said, hey, look, there's a bunch of these files here that are really helpful for a lot of people. Let's prepackage them to install them very quickly. So if you're somebody who's going to be dealing with Chinese or Japanese, or whatever this is, um, uncomment it and then it'll install it to uncomment it you just remove these semicolons so you can hit uh insert delete delete or you can do you know insert backspace backspace or don't even get out of the insert mode or don't even get into the insert mode at all and just hit x 
X. That's going to delete characters as you're moving around in this, but I don't need any of those, so I don't care. Um, and uh, here are the few ones that I have. I encourage you to at least check out Deft. That may be the way you want to take notes. Deft is a great um, style of note taking for Emacs. It's not the one that I use. I use a Org Roam. That's really what I use most of the time. But Deft is good for searching all of your notes uh, quickly. Um, well, it's actually pretty slow, but it, it does the job. That's why I don't use it because it is pretty slow. So this is uh, just, he's got all these comments here you can read a little bit about or go to the um, packages or just search these packages on, um, you know, whatever search engine you want to use, like .go or start page, and it'll show you some of these things. I probably should figure out how to use multiple cursors, but that's for me and not for this video at least. So let's say you just want to install that XX. Now it's highlighted there to show you, hey, it's going to be installed. And then you reload Doom Emacs. To reload Doom Emacs, to restart everything up, you hit space H, or sorry, space H R R. Now, as it's doing this, it's going to take a little bit of time to upload things. And I hope this doesn't break anything. It shouldn't, but it's cloning now. Um, that multiple cursors. I don't even know how to use it, so maybe I'll make a video on how to use that once I figure out how to use it. But um, that's pretty cool. So there's multiple cursor mode. Um, so that's you install these flags here. Now some of them, not flags, these modules, some of them have flags. Let's go down to the org mode one that you should totally have installed. And you can add these flags, which is like uh, plus, plus set. So Org or plus Rome is the org Rome flag, and it's going to install all those things that help you have org Rome going up and running. And uh, present is going to install everything for org reveal using reveal.js, which is a pretty decent way to create straightforward, simple PowerPoint or present slide show presentations. Um, the last one I want to look at because it, it helps us for the next thing we're going to look at is is to uncomment this literature down here. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to use, um, to quickly uh, edit and mess around with the config.el file. So let's go to that one here right now. So save it, uh, space HRR that runs it. Here's config.el. Now, here we are. And inside of here, we have same thing read the code inside of here we have all these different things you can do and uh i think a while ago i looked at when i was using space max you can look up uh, some of this stuff is pretty much the same here and just see what's the cool thing is here but um what i've done beforehand is um commented things out so like when i'm doing this i would add so um you know like make it so I can read it. Uh, so command log options, I would comment that out to say, Hey, here's where my command log options are. And I would kind of try to like find where that is as I'm looking through this code that doesn't work all that well. So I don't ever touch this section of Emacs. I space, oops, space FP, um, config, not EL, but config.org. And I create this file and I just, create this file and what this file does is some of my colors are wrong I was changing some colors um, what this file does is it has the same exact information here but in an org file so each of these headings begins with this uh, hashtag plus begin underscore source code elisp and it ends with end source code so that's how that works and inside this this is elisp and org babble whatever it does it goes okay take the what's ever inside of this and whenever you reload emacs so let's just you know mess around here here is the new text save it now whenever i reload emacs uh you'll notice here at the bottom uh yes save anyways um yes you'll see here that it's going to say a oh, tangled 21 blocks of I think it's what I said. That is going to then 
whatever's in here, it's going to populate back on this config.el file. So I edit all my stuff in here. And what that allows me to do is I haven't done this yet, but first off, it allows quick customization. So all my deft notes, all of my deft stuff here uh, is right there. And all my, my make numbered list little code thing uh, that goes right here. So let's say I'm having a problem with this line of code. It used to be I'd have to go, all right, let's go and find it and figure out where this went. Um, okay, okay, it's here. And then I have to mess around with it. But in this mode, I just go, I can read it. Well, these are supposed to be white. Um, anyways, uh, I can go back and then there's my code, make my changes, save it, reload it. It's good, much quicker. And then on top of that, at some point, um, because this is on, I, I'll occasionally push this to my GitHub to a lot of people see this. I can just say, uh, you know, this makes numbered lists um and then the more explanation even further then when people look at my uh configuration file they see not only this source code here but they also see what it does and i can be more specific i i don't really um i just have the headings to explain it for myself here as far as what these do but if you want to go even further as far as explaining to yourself or maybe uh you want to push your own uh, configuration to GitHub, you can do that as well. All right, good. So that's that. Um, config or uh, custom.el, you're really not supposed to. In fact, anytime you mess with this stuff, um, here, let's show you what I mean by that. Like customize group, it's going to be like, stop, don't do this. Um, Doom doesn't support customize configure from customize. Instead, um, Sorry, it's probably should say some of the stuff um, instead. Do you want to use this command anyways? The thing is, is that you can actually still use this command, but sometimes it'll just wipe it out, and that gets pretty pretty annoying. So use it at your own risk, <laughs> which is just goes basically all of Emacs is use it at your own risk. All right, last one is our package file here, and that's how you add packages. So. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty small file. So let's say you don't have one in the uh, init file here back when we were at this one. Let's say it's something that's not in here, which there's a lot of packages that aren't in there. You would add the file using this here. So let's say this file DTK, it, um, you can create an org Bible with it. You can insert texts pretty quickly uh, using that. Um, it's a cool package, but it's not inside the other thing inside of the init file or yet yeah, the init file. So add it here. And when you add it and you hit save it and then you reload it, it's going to reload it. So that's how that works. And it works very well. Now let's say you're, you're just want to troubleshoot some packages here. Maybe your Todoist uh, app is giving you problems here, which I'm not using Todoist on here. I did, but I'm, I'm just not right now. Let's say that's just giving you some problems. Um, comment it out, uh, uh, save it, reload it, and then it's gone. And then maybe the problem solved, maybe it's not, comment something else out, run the same thing till you fix that problem, whatever it is that you're dealing with. All right, uh, that's cool. I think it's enough for that kind of stuff. Um, here's just the last thing I'll say with all this. It is, um, what I've done here is probably pretty fast, especially if you're new, but hopefully you can go back and just watch it a few times just to, to kind of get through it um, or just go back and just watch the things that you would, uh, you know, was helpful for you to watch um, and, and just go through it and just kind of go, okay, this is how things work and how to move around it. That's it. This is just how to save things as far as editing just the basic stuff of things. There's some other things we can do. We'll worry about that on other videos, but for right now, that should get you up and running with using uh, do the max in a very simple way. Hope this video has been helpful. Go have fun messing around.